Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. For this week's project, I'm going to turn this regular three-loop Celtic knot in this segmented vase. It's knots on the inside, knots on the outside. This is actually the culmination of many different things that I've been doing recently uh, in terms of that one, it's segmented, two, it's jigs for the bandsaw or the table saw. But the point of this is that there has to be a process and a jig to able, enable this to be very regular. The tops are all at the same height, the bottoms are all at the same height, and to intersect properly. So I'll be showing that process in, in this video, but also what you may not hear in this is the table, uh, the bandsaw jig consists of two parts. One, just a very simple table uh, that has a board that will ride in the miter gauge. And then a top part that will actually take a, be able to mount the chuck to this top part. These two, rather than any fancy uh, mechanism to align them, I just hot melt them together at the angle and position that I want them. So we'll be showing that more in the video, but this is, uh, I think, a very nice bowl. I can make a three loop, four loop, five loop, whatever I want and have them all regular in the process. It's just a matter of the process. So uh, this will probably become my signature series because I don't think anybody else has done this before. So here we go with a three loop Celtic knot in a larger vase. For this project, I chose to use segmented wood. This is not a requirement, but it is nice that I can create the general form of the size I want from scratch. If this were solid, I would have rough turned it, then let it dry, then recut mounting tenons. Then the solid and this one would be about at the same stage. But for now, I created nine segment rings of eight segments each. Two are walnut, the rest are maple. One advantage of segmented is that I can also divide the project up into smaller sections to work on. At this point, the rings that are to have the Celtic knot are mounted to a faceplate. The top two rings have their faceplate, and the bottom rings will be tapered together for strength. Each has a faceplate for now. The bottom rings have been inset to each other with a taper joint. They were also split into two, rotated slightly, and glued together again for strength before being inset into the walnut ring that will be the foot. The three main sections of this project are posing for a group selfie before heading into the Celtic knot process. I subsequently replaced the maple rings for the Celtic knot with four cherry rings in response to a whoops that we will not discuss. The Celtic knot process for the bandsaw is repetitive. Therefore, I will only show the final cut. The wood on its faceplate is mounted to a simple sliding table with two sections. There is a strip on the bottom to ride the miter slot in the bandsaw table. The top section holds the faceplate that in turn holds the project wood. After deciding on a good angle, I hot melt glued the two sections together so that all slices could be uniform. After setting the correct rotation for a three lobe knot, I made the outer cut. The three temporary scrap wood assemblies with dowels enable me to put the wood back together again. On the first slice, they also enabled measuring how much wood was removed for replacement. For now, with the wood back together, I insert a spacer under the faceplate to offset the cut about a quarter inch. I'm using the markings on the top surface to re-index the wood to the same rotation, then carefully make the lower cut. With this much blade exposed, I am careful about where my hands are and try to keep them on one side or behind the blade. Now to replace the wood I cut out with a segmented ring from walnut. Again, this could be solid. The issue is that I must replace the same amount of wood that was cut out, including the kerfs. There are two of them. The thing to be careful of, if using segmented replacing wood, is that the ring is now oval with the length slightly but significantly longer than the stacked rings. I first check the assembly with the dowel assemblies in place, then mix up 30 minute epoxy, spread it over the four new surfaces and assemble it all together again with the dowels. It is a messy business, gloves are essential. Then a chuck makes sufficient weight. 
With epoxy, I do not need a lot of pressure. Finally, I have what is starting to look like a lathe project. The rings containing the Celtic knot is on the lathe. It is pretty ugly with all the epoxy and hot melt glue and the remaining positioners. With all the wild wood direction, I find that a shear cutting does the best job of cleaning up the cylinder. Plus, I need to clean up the top surface so that it can be glued to the bottom. Next, just a bit of cleanup for the bottom section, then glue them together. Next, get rid of the faceplate holding the middle section. The chipboard is nasty to part, but worked well as a quick faceplate. Now to dress up the top rim section. It is easier to hollow now while only two rings thick, but I cannot remove too much until I can visualize the whole vase. I decide to cut back the maple ring. It seemed too thick, potentially overpowering the Celtic knot below. I press the sections together and turn them as a unit since I can visualize them better now. Since I know the exterior profile better now, I can hollow to a good wall thickness. Then glue them together. Now to part off the top faceplate and start to clean up the interior. I'm worried a bit about the projection and mount the steady rest to add some stability. But that was not enough. The chipboard faceplate at the bottom failed. I had cut into it while insetting the bottom rings. With that wood gone, it could not take any pressure. Bummer. Fortunately, the steady rest at least caught the vase so that it did not bounce on the floor. Out come the coal jaws. I need to clean up the bottom, removing the remaining chipboard debris. With the speed restriction for the coal jaws, this is slow work, then glue on a fresh faceplate. With the vase again mounted to a secure faceplate, I can continue hollowing, mostly near the rim with a spindle gouge. Fortunately, there is not a lot of wobble from the remount. And just a bit more shear cutting on the outside. It is almost there already, but I also need to take out the wobble from the remount. After sanding, now to part off the completed vase. This solid maple faceplate is tough, so I do not go all the way. To avoid risk of launching the vase, I finish it off on the bandsaw. Now to finish off the foot. 
That walnut is not a thin applied ring, it is actually a full depth ring but inset with a 5 degree taper for more strength. After sanding, a good bath in walnut oil provide a good matte finish. I have not decided whether to buff it yet. This completes my segmented vase with a three lobe Celtic knot with a bandsaw technique that enables a larger diameter regular knot with as many lobes as I want. I don't think anyone has done a Celtic knot this vase this way before. I really like it. It is available as a remote demonstration. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week, I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. Please wear your full face shield for safety anytime the lathe is running. I will see you next week with another wood turning video. Take time to count your blessings.